Oh, man. You know, I think more and more people worldwide are recognizing the vacuous, rights-crushing blather pouring forth from Western dinosaur media. But one of the pop news crowd's favorite guests just gave us one of the most perfect examples of this foolish, agenda-driven idiocy. Let's take a look at that man and at the machinations. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. You know, I think it's safe to say the pop media have a knack for helping to push the revolving door of bureaucrats, deep state plotters, think tankers, university hacks, and ne'er-do-wells who circle in and out of those favored slots as they push various government promoting agendas and philosophies. For example, despite his Obama-era involvement in hundreds if not thousands of utterly unconstitutional, non-wartime, extrajudicial drone killings, and despite his evident ties to two manufactured Russian meddling for Trump narratives in 2017 and 2020, or perhaps it was because of all of that, MSNBC hired former CIA director John Brennan to be an analyst and keeps bringing him on for, yes, more incredible nonsense on their shrinking platform. Likewise, CNN hired James Clapper, the Obama national security man, who openly stated a falsehood in Congress in 2014 when asked by Senator Ron Wyden if the U.S. government was spying on the telecommunications of Americans. Uh, here's a little hint, everybody, as you already know. You can tell the lefties it was spying. Of course, like the U.S. government, CNN gave that man a pass and gave Clapper a salary to speak as an advisor to boot. And now, the latest in the continuing march of misanthropes, MSNBC is mum about... Yet another of their favorite national security experts, a man who makes one wonder if he comes from the deep state or the derp state. His name is Malcolm Nance. He's been directly or indirectly involved with intelligence and the military since he started in the Navy in 1981, and he's attracted more than a bit of troubling attention for contradictions and statements, such as correctly calling waterboarding torture in 2007, but after admitting that he had done it hundreds of times himself. He also openly claimed on air that Donald Trump had been compromised by Russia since 1977. In fact, it was Luke Harding at The Guardian who came out with the first indicators that Donald Trump had been under Russian intelligence surveillance for a very long time, as early as 1977 with his first wife, Ivana. And Ivana was from the Czech Republic, which at that time was Czechoslovakia. Their intelligence agency, the STB, had her communications uh, with, you know, between the United States and the Czech Republic under surveillance. And they knew an enormous amount of information about Donald Trump between 1977 and the mid 80s. So Russia became very interested in him. They had 10 years of collection, and then they brought him to Moscow for what he wanted, which was Trump Tower. But from that moment on, an enormous dossier of information was collected on him, and more importantly, how to exploit him. And Nance falsely told the unquestioning Joy Reid on MSNBC that Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein had a program on Russian-sponsored news net Russia Today. I mean, Jill Stein was sure. sitting at Putin's table right with uh, General Flynn. Jill Stein has a show on Russia Today. Look, this is not a conspiracy theory, okay? And I'm not saying that just because I'm an intelligence professional. I'm sure Dr. Stein was surprised to hear of her non-existent hit show. Now, Nance has added new air to his ever-expanding balloon of bloviating idiocy. Nance decided to parade his great knowledge February 24th by tweeting that the Chernobyl nuclear plant provides energy 
nearly 40 years after the reactor meltdown there kinda sorta stopped energy creation at the site. Yes, it also visited immediate and long-term death and ionized radiation disease to between 9,000 and 60,000 people and created an unlivable so-called exclusion zone, 30 kilometers in diameter that will remain deadly or dangerous to biological life for decades. This is a place that in 1986, at the time of the meltdown, saw a release of radioactive material 400 times higher than the nuclear blast at Hiroshima. It means the fire we're watching with our own eyes is giving off nearly twice the radiation released by the bomb in Hiroshima. And that's every single hour, hour after hour. 20 hours since the explosion, so 40 bombs worth by now. 48 more tomorrow, and it will not stop. Not in a week, not in a month, it will burn and spread its poison until the entire continent is dead. And radiation levels near the core complex as high as 300 sieverts per hour, which causes quick death in that single hour and sees long-term deaths for anyone exposed for even a fraction of an hour. Nance, the supposed national security expert, not only neglected to recall the worst nuclear disaster in world history, followed by the 2011 tsunami flooded reactor collapse at Fukushima, Japan, and he also neglected to think about all those people who perished or suffered because of it. In addition to that, he took the time to type his dumb thoughts and then post them on Twitter after someone asked why Vladimir Putin would send troops to secure the Chernobyl site in the midst of his attack on Ukraine. Other observers figured that Putin did so as a way to create a staging area that Ukrainian forces would not bomb because bombing the land would release clouds of radioactive dust that would be carried into settled parts of Ukraine. Of course, like Nance deleted the history of Chernobyl in his own tweet, he also deleted the tweet itself, trying to cover up his legacy of completely asinine statements. Good thing Mr. Nance is such an expert rather than a fiction author and that networks like MSNBC welcome him so often. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, such good news reporters. One can't wait to see what he and MSNBC offer next. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Remember to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, and we'll see you on Rumble where they don't censor us. We'll see you on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Great interaction still on Facebook, and we hope that you'll visit mrctv.org anytime. Go there all the time. The team really works hard. And of course, if you get the opportunity, go to the MRC store and buy some great items. They'll really freak out the left like Mr. Nance. <laughs> For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.